In this video, I'll install the structures aft of the forward funnel. That really just comes down to these two pieces, which, although very small, have a rather large amount of photo etch on them. This piece, I've reattached the door, needs the ladders, some railing, and a piece of photo etch on top of that block. This piece has a huge amount of photo etch on it. Firstly, there's this photo etch that needs to go in between these pillars, and then there's a lot of photo etch that goes on the top of it. All these little circles have platforms with railings, some railings along that back section, a platform and railings over there as well, and then also these wind deflectors that get attached to these surfaces over here. I also install these platforms that are on the side of the funnel. All I need to do for those is make up this single ladder, which includes a platform, and attach that. Once that is done, I can install the railings on the first level of the superstructure. I'm going to start by building the wind deflectors. Wind deflectors are attached to the forward parts of the ship such that the wind hits them and is directed up and over the exposed areas. This makes these areas a little bit more habitable for the crew. It's just a matter of folding them along the lines etched into the metal, making sure that all the edges line up correctly. Since that is the only part that needed to be folded and glued, I then moved on to spray painting all of the photo etch that I'd used during this phase of the build. Next up, I installed a hatch on a box, apply the super glue by letting it be drawn into the gap between the photo etch and the plastic box. Now it is time to start installing railings. This piece has some curved edges, which means that this photo etch isn't scored and I'll need to bend it. For the most part, this photo etch was attached using extra thin super glue. I then worked on the struts that go in between these pillars for this piece of superstructure that sits aft of the forward funnel. Once again, using the same technique of dry fitting them in place and then using extra thin super glue applied from behind the piece to fix it in place. I then moved on to one of the more repetitive parts of the build, that is creating these little platforms for binoculars and other equipment. Each of these platforms has a small railing that needs to be curved into a circle. This is not a difficult thing to do, it's just a matter of finding a cylinder that's the correct diameter. The correct diameter being a diameter slightly smaller than the shape that you actually want it to be in. I find screwdrivers and drill bits to be convenient cylinders on which to roll small pieces. Something that I found quite odd about this piece is how the railings are illustrated over here. You can see there's a gap over there and a gap there for the ladder. But when you actually place these pieces down, there isn't enough for two equally sized gaps. So because of that, what I did was I placed this piece of railing right next to that piece so that there would be just a gap for the ladder and no gap over there. Well, it turns out there is meant to be a gap there, although it isn't meant to be a big gap. And that, comes into play when you place these struts on this piece. Because what you need to do is leave a small gap so that the bottom of those struts can slip in between those two railings. So to correct that, I had to remove this railing and reposition it. Fortunately, that was fairly easy to correct. So after making that correction, I can get back to building this part up. I'll now glue down these little circles and semicircles. This extra thick glue takes a little bit longer to dry. It doesn't bond instantly upon contact. That's quite useful for scenarios like this because it allows you to place the part on the glue, let it almost float so that you can position it where you want it, and then you just leave it for a few seconds to harden. As long as you're moving it around, it's not gonna stick. And then as soon as you just let it sit for a couple of seconds, it will grip and then no longer be movable. The last piece of photo etch on this part is a small section of railing. As is common with pretty much all the railing that I install, I start by applying extra thick super glue to one of the edges, which I then use to tack the railing in place. After covering everything in a layer of acrylic glass varnish and giving it to dry for a day, I then applied black panel line. The panel line will provide a very light weathering effect and bring out details. Because everything is covered in that glass coat to protect the underlying paint, you don't have to be very careful about where you place it. You can splotch it down wherever you want it and be confident that you can easily remove it with turpentine without damaging the paint. Since I prefer the lightly weathered effect, I then use turpentine to remove almost all of the panel line. In the hard to reach areas, I flood it with turpentine and then use a dry brush to soak up the excess turpentine. For these gratings, I want them to stand out a bit better, so I applied more panel line to them, and then I used a cotton bud to try and remove the excess on the top while still leaving a fair amount of panel liner in the grooves. After letting it dry for a day, I then sprayed everything in a matte coat. After the matte varnish had dried, 
I then glued the parts down using Revell Contactor Professional. The type of glue that you use to glue down these plastic parts doesn't really matter. I tend to vacillate between using Revell Contactor and Demir Extra Thin. I find Extra Thin works especially well if you have a gloss coat. It allows it to run very nicely into the gaps, but it also works fine on a matte paint. To install the wings, I put them down loose and then used Extra Thin plastic cement to glue them in place. The final piece of the superstructure is this paraboloid walkway, which I glued down using extra thin super glue. With the superstructure glued in place, I could then go on to installing some of the smaller details, like these binoculars, which are installed in the circular platforms. Pieces like this are so small that you can just hand paint them, weather them, and clean them up on the sprue. Since these small plastic pieces needed to stick onto photo etch, I needed to use a super glue. Once again, I used extra thick super glue. This gives me a bit of time to position the part before the glue sets, making it impossible to move. These are the smallest parts that come in the base kit. Of course, these are still quite a bit larger than the smallest parts that come in the detail upgrade kit. That then concluded the superstructure portion of this video. I then moved on to installing the railings for the first level of the superstructure. For levels of the superstructure, especially where it's almost entirely enclosed, I prefer to cut and test fit the entire length of railing before gluing down any of the pieces. This is because often there are mistakes in these user manuals and parts are duplicated or given the wrong numbers and you need to actually work out which part really does go in, in which location. And sometimes the fit of these pieces isn't great and you'll need to make adjustments as to where the piece should actually go. Another thing to keep in mind is sometimes the joins aren't in the best of places and you'll need to make a judgment call if you want a gap in a certain place or if you can position it in such a way that a gap can be concealed or filled with another piece of railing. This is why in my build process, the first thing that I do is cut off all the pieces of the railing that will be installed in this round on this deck and just test and make sure that they're all gonna fit in where they're supposed to go. At this point, I'll also place the bends and have the pieces in the correct shape so that when it does come to gluing, it's a fairly simple process of picking up an already correctly folded piece that I know will work in the location where I intend to glue it and then just sticking it down. It's just a matter of avoiding surprises because in the past I've had issues. I've assumed everything will fit. I've assumed the shape and everything will be fine. Started gluing only to find that it's not gonna work. The longer the length that you are trying to stick down, the more chance that there will be an issue that you'll have to account for somewhere along the line. As for the actual process to install these railings, it's the same as you've seen me do many times before now. I take one end, apply it directly to the bottom railing, some extra thick super glue, and you use that to tack it in place. I then pull it with tweezers or fingers or whatever is gonna work to get it into the correct shape. And then I work back with extra thin super glue, sticking down the full length of the railing. Just be aware that in this montage, it looks as though I'm very rapidly placing down pieces. Obviously there's a lot of editing here. I do hold the piece in, in place for a while just to give it glue a small chance to set. So it's not like you can just rapid fire, stick down a whole lot of railing. This is edited. It took me around half an hour to glue all this down. If you're using a piece of wire to apply super glue for a long period of time, you might notice that the glue starts to dry and build up on the tip of that wire. And then when that happens, you start to pick up more glue with each pass. And if you pick up too much glue, then you'll start making a mess. You might have seen it in other videos, but I have a glass bottle that contains a little bit of acetone. And when I start getting a buildup of super glue on the wire, I place the wire in that acetone, which will dissolve the super glue. So that is where I'll end this video. The railing hasn't been sprayed in a matte coat. And now there is the super glue, so it is still a bit glossy. The reason for that is I'm going to have to do a spray later on, so there's not much point in me doing it now. It's just wasting paint effectively because it's going to be repeated anyway. In the next video, I'll continue by installing the bridge and the upper parts of the superstructure. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Cheers.